What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Thursday. Time to go over another week of NFL predictions. I'm going to go over every single game in today's video, and I'm going to try my very best to actually get every single pick right this week. Uh, of course, every single week, I do go over every single game. I do college football as well. Those videos are posted on Wednesdays. So that video was posted yesterday. If you want my opinion on every single game this week in college football, go check out the video. There's a free pick in both of the videos, and check that out, guys. Another 2-0 for the for the channel here. Uh, the 12-7 and record moves to 14-7. and Of course, I have a free play for you guys in today's video. Uh, definitely drop a like on the video, guys. Show your support, man. I don't have to do these videos. Um, this might even be the last one I do, depending on how many likes and how many views we get here as we start to transition to basketball. So if you guys can keep the likes coming, keep the views, keep the support going with the channel for football, I'll continue it throughout the rest of the season. Uh, but premium, man, it's just so hot. It's just crazy. I don't even have to do any videos. Uh, me and the premium clients, we can just go uh, sit on a beach and retire at this point. Check out the numbers, guys. It's absolutely awesome. The last four weeks, just kind of a medium sample size here. 4.3, 3.3, 4.4, 3.1 units. The last four weeks, nice and consistent, winning at just about every single week in college football. The last three weeks in NFL is even better. We're talking over uh, 17 units of profit in the NFL. Uh, man, how about over 30 units combining football over the past six weeks? Absolutely spectacular. I mean, a little bit of math for you guys at even a hundred dollars, you know, if your unit size is just a hundred bucks and I know some of you guys out there are heavy hitters and you bet a lot more than that. And congratulations. Those people are up a ton of money, uh, but even at just a hundred bucks a pop or 50 bucks a pop, man, thousands and thousands of dollars. Get my picks. I'm red hot. It's not going to stop. We're at the point of the season where my sample size, all the models and projections and analytics Everything is just squared away. Everything's just accurate. Um, we got the we got the kinks out. You know, the first few weeks of the season in all sports, not just football, uh, MLB, basketball. You, you you need sample size to have accuracy in sports betting. You just have to have it. So we're at the point now uh, where basically we're red hot and this should continue all the way through the end of the season. Um, so it's just an exciting time. Again, link to my website, danspicks.net. It's right in the description. You can get a week, man. Just try out a week if you want. It's only 29 bucks, less than 30 bucks, man. What is that, like half of a gas tank in your car? Get the picks. We're going to have a huge week. I've already sent out some futures bets uh, for even next week as well. So it's kind of a bonus week to be on there. Might have a couple of basketball plays in the mix as well. Speaking of basketball, I have brought that back to the channel. Tuesdays and Fridays now uh, are college hoop videos going over every game on the slate. So look forward to that video tomorrow. Um, but yeah. That's pretty much it, guys. There's not a whole lot to say. I'm red hot. Have been for weeks. You see my recap videos, hopefully, that I post every single Tuesday. Um, so if you want to know actually like in-depth the detail of all of my wagers and the exact numbers that we've done, just go check out the recap videos, man. Everything's all electronically basically filed here on my YouTube channel. Um, we're going to use FanDuel like we usually do to go over these games in today's video. So let me pull that up. Um, and I think that's it, man. Let's go, guys. I'm going to try to get every single pick right for you guys today. Hopefully you appreciate it. It's good to have you guys back here. Put your favorite comments or, or, or favorite picks down in that comment section as well. Love seeing the bets you guys are making, man. You guys make some good wagers lately. See a lot of people down in the comment section cash and tickets. So here's FanDuel. I was looking for it on all the tabs. So let me just take that and we'll do a little refresh on it just to have the latest up-to-date numbers. NFL. Here we go. Week 11. Pretty good looking week. Washington, Philly, Thursday night football tonight. Uh, look, three and a half. Obviously, it was a three. I would like the three a lot better. I like Philly in this game. Um, let's check the money splits just for this one. Let's look at the money splits. I'm not going to do this for every game, but I'll do it for a few of them. A few of them that I think are a little bit important here. And it'll be interesting to see if there's any buyback on Washington here now that it's above the, the, the threshold of three. Um, but the money, you know, it, it it's about even. It's about even, guys. There's there's just not a whole lot. Uh, there's nothing that really stands out. I just think Philly's the better team. I think Washington. It's been uh, it's been a great year, but they've overachieved. I think the Eagles are about where we expected them to be. Three and a half. Obviously, the three was better. I'm gonna lay the points with Philly. Give me Philly. They should get it done. Jacksonville. And the Lions. And this actually is right off the bat our whiteboard winning free pick. 
of the week. I'm currently seeing a 13. Let me go back. So it's 13 and a half on FanDuel, but some books have a 13. I looked just before I recorded this video. Guys, I can't bet on the Lions in a spot like this. I like them. I think they cover. I love this for the whiteboard. But just coming off that comeback, a short week, kind of a weird emotional flat spot game. And, and I know, I know the culture of Detroit right now. It is so rich and there's strength and there's grit and it's awesome. And I love the coaching staff. I love the players. We got Jared Goff coming off of a bad game. He could probably bounce back huge here. Uh, Jacksonville's pretty much packed it in. Their season's over. You know, we got Mac Jones going here. But just based on it, it's the NFL. This is still the NFL. We, we, we just cannot get complacent. This is still the NFL laying 13 in, in any spot with any teams, any matchup, anything you could possibly come up with for a scenario. It's always risky. It's always risky. I mean, this could be a a 17 point game and one late touchdown by Jacksonville at the end and junk time, you know, gets you back under the number. So is there going to be a backdoor cover open for Jacksonville? I think it's at least possible just based on the scenario and, and just kind of being late to the party. I haven't been riding Detroit all of these weeks. I don't want to hop on now. I like the play. I just was not going to send it out in premium. Uh, so I'll go ahead and have it for the whiteboard free pick this week, guys. We're going to rock with the Lions. I think Jared, Jared Goff can have a good game here. Let's keep rocking, man. Green Bay, Bears. Interesting line move. I mean, this was higher than it is now. It's down to five and a half. Lay it. I, I don't know. How, how could you beat Chicago? I totally understand the rivalry. This is in Chicago. The weather. But the Packers are off a bye. Packers are a better football team. Packers have the better quarterback. Maybe there's a little bit of a dead count bounce with the with the coaching staff change that the Bears have made. The line feels a little bit short. I, I, it almost feels a little bit like it's too easy just to take the Packers in this spot where it seems like everything's unraveling for the Bears. You know, watch them only lose by like three or four. It's definitely possible you could maybe consider Green Bay for a, a money line play in a in a two team money line uh, type of wager, something to consider. Look, I think Green Bay is going to get it done. I got to lay the points here. I'm a Green Bay fan. Take it with a grain of salt. It's always a rival. You know, I'm recording this video on a Thursday or, or a Wednesday night here um, for Thursday. So, you know, weather reports aren't really going to do me any good. You kind of got to be within 24 hours, 48 hours of a game these days to even have an accurate weather forecast. So maybe it's windy in Chicago. Maybe it's a low scoring game. We see the total at 40. I just can't trust the Bears. There's no way I could bet them. Square. Everybody's on them. Give me the pack. Rams, New England, give me the Rams, man. And it's just sick and it's just, it makes me sick. It makes me so sick to my stomach to bet on the Rams after that, that Monday night. And, and we crushed Monday. I mean, I'll even put a, I'll put, maybe I'll put one of the texts on the screen. I'll just, one of the people who got the text, just a random sample from the client list, to kind of what you guys can expect when you're on my daily text list. Uh, the plays that went out for that game. Guys, we smashed it. We smashed it. I mean, it was one of my biggest nights ever. We had the under. We had the Dolphins. We had a same game parlay that we combined Monday and Sunday night for, which was, uh, I think, a five-unit max play, if I'm not mistaken. We gained five units on the straights on Monday night. Um, we absolutely went off on Sunday and Monday this past week. But I still watched the game, and it still made me sick to watch Stafford um, just knowing what a, what just a joke of an effort, man. And new England, they've, been, they've kind of been a little bit scrappy lately at the end of the day. I just don't, I, I don't have faith in the Patriots to do it twice. You come off a nice win. The bears were kind of in shambles. How impressive was it really? Now you get the Rams in a desperation spot. If the Rams want any type of playoff scenario, you got to get games like this. I think they go on the road more focused after a bad game. Um, it is a short week. A little bit scary. You're laying four and a half with a team that just doesn't look like they're very organized right now. Um, I'll still do it. Give me the Rams. I'll lay the points. Cleveland and the Saints flip a coin for this one. Uh, but I'm going to go to the Browns here. Um, you just got to kind of close your eyes, cross your fingers, plug your nose, plug your ears, whatever, man. You got to just almost bet it and forget it, not even watch the game and hopefully just check the score and see that your ticket cashed on this one. Look, Jameis, man, I just hope he doesn't screw up. I don't believe in the Saints. They had the, they had the best spot ever. I mean, it was a perfect scenario against the Falcons um, with the coaching change, and they got up for that game, and a you know, divisional game, and you're at home. That was the spot, man. The Saints were the spot last week, okay? Now... You're only laying one and a half, basically, and even on the money line. I mean, the money lines are minus 108 apiece. Let's see where the money is on this game. 
Money splits, money splits. What do we got? I would imagine the Saints are quite popular. Yeah, I mean, some books some books have a plus one on the Saints right now. Um, but the money's on the Browns. The money's on the Browns. Now, you got to use the money line metrics, not the spread, because a lot of people who are going to bet a game like this will just be betting on the money line. About 53% of bets on the Browns, about 58% of the money. Things look fine. I like the Browns here. I think they get it done. I just think they got a little bit more to the roster. Um, if New Orleans was perfectly healthy and they were still super intact and organized with you know an intact coaching staff, maybe I'd give them another shot back-to-back weeks. Not here. Give me the Browns on the money line. That is a risky one. Uh, Vikings, Tennessee. <sighs> Sam Darnold, man. Is Sam Darnold really a starting quarterback in the NFL? He is the glass ceiling for this team, in my opinion. I, I, I like the I like the receivers. Hawkinson back. I like Addison. I like Aaron Jones. I like the defense overall. I don't love the scheme, but I do like the players. This is still laying five and a half on the road in the NFL. I don't think it's a gimme. I don't think it's a gimme. We have a low total. God, I feel like this is going to come up just a little bit short. I mean, you just cannot take all these favorites and just keep laying the points, you know, crossing your fingers and hoping the better team gets it done. I'm going to lay the points with the Vikings. Colts and Jets. Give me the points. Give me the points. The Jets are a joke, a complete joke. How many times are we going to give them like, okay, well, this is the week they're going to get it together. This is the week. I saw Devontae Adams starting to make up the fake injuries, something with his wrist, something with an illness, probably just BS. He doesn't want to be on the field. Um, Aaron is just old, frail, slow, unathletic, and just mentally, they're just not engaged. I think the players are starting to quit. The coaching staff is a complete joke, a complete disrespect to Robert Sala. If this exact roster still had that original coaching staff set up the way it was, I think they'd have some more wins. Um on the record, but this is a joke. This is one of the most undisciplined, poorly coached teams um, in the entire NFL. In fact, I'll probably go ahead and say that they're the worst. I'll take the three and a half. I think the Colts probably win the game outright. And the under in that game, take the under. Baltimore and Steelers. Well, this is one we're on paper. You want to lay the points? I mean, okay, Pittsburgh, man. I liked them last week. I liked them over commanders. I've been saying the commanders are fraudulent. Not fraudulent as in like they're bad, but fraudulent as in like, guys, calm down. This team's not elite. Pittsburgh got the win. Three? We only have to lay three with Lamar Jackson in this offense. You know, history, man. History will tell you the Steelers are the play. These two teams in Pittsburgh in November, and you're getting a, a field goal with the home divisional dog? I know there's plenty of trends in history that'll point to that side. At the end of the day, these are new teams. They're new rosters, different players. It's not the old school football of the early 2000s and, and things of that nature. I expect a high scoring game. I, I, I'll go over 48 and a half in this game. Probably the better play than the side. And I'll probably just lay the three with Baltimore. I mean, I don't know how... I, even the Steelers defense can't keep Baltimore in check. They're going to score on anybody. The NFL these days is just set up for offensive success. So it comes down to, can the Steelers simply keep pace with Baltimore? I don't think they can. And Baltimore's defense is horrible. So I'm, 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 I'm well aware of that. Look at the over. Next game, Raiders-Dolphins. Um, Jesus, seven points. <sighs> seven points, seven points, seven points, man. Um boy, this feels tricky. This, this one feels, uh, this one feels really, really tricky to me. Short week for Miami. They did get the win. I thought they looked good at times. They looked horrible at times. I liked the defense, but I still think that Monday night game to me, and I watched every second of the game, it looked like the Rams having a bad game more than it looked like the Dolphins having a good game. I thought it was a very, very mentally disengaged, undisciplined, horrible effort from the Rams. I, I, I didn't exactly see the Rams play good and the Dolphins outplaying them. I thought the Dolphins just caught the Rams on just a tough night where they just couldn't do anything right. 
Stafford looked like a lost puppy out there. So how much stock can we put into the Dolphins laying a touchdown? Should the Dolphins really be laying a touchdown here? Look at the under in this game. I'm going to go under 44 and a half. I have no play on the side. Seattle and San Fran. I think DK Metcalf is back. I feel like it's a shootout. They score, they score, they score, they score. Over 48 and a half. If you had to play the side, I kind of want to take Seattle here, plus the points. I do think they lose in heartbreaking fashion. I think San Fran's going to get the job done and get this win. But at almost a touchdown with Metcalf back, Seattle is just different. Gino can pass on these guys. San Fran's defense hasn't really, you know, I'm not thrilled about it this year. San Fran should look even better with McCaffrey healthier. He should get more of a workload. It'll help him in the end of the game if they need to grind out some first downs and kill the clock. I think I'd lean taking the points, but I think I'd rather play the over in that one. Falcons, Broncos, two and a half point spread. I think the wrong team's favored. Um, Atlanta, man, their defense is bad. We're talking Ravens bad. We're talking really, really bad. Um, even Bo Nix and this, this Denver team who's, who's been playing some low, lower scoring games. I think they're going to score, but I, I don't even think even being at home in elevation with this amazing Denver defense, I love the Atlanta offense. I love it. I still think it's going to score. I think they can outscore Denver in this spot. I don't like the situational spot with Denver being so heartbroken, uh, over almost beating a divisional uh, rival in the chief. So I don't love the, the, you know, you got the Atlanta off a loss right now. They're on the road. I think they're going to be focused, better offense, more experienced quarterback. At the end of the day, you could still get rookie mistakes from Bo Nix. He's looked good. I like him as a player. I think he has a future in the NFL. I think the wrong team's favored. This is a nail biter game. Give me the two and a half though. I'm not going to get greedy on the money line. And uh, I think I play over 44 and a half. I know Denver's defense, but Atlanta's defense is trash. Denver's going to get some points on them, and I don't care how good the defense is. It's it's modern day NFL. The offenses are going to score here. That's a low number in the mid forties. We're talking like 23, 24 type game gets you over. I think that that's exactly what we could be looking at here is the score 24 to 23. And I don't know who's going to win. I lean the Falcons. Give me the two and a half. Give me the over. Chiefs Bills. I'm sure you guys will be very interested in this one. Look, I'm very aware of the history of Chiefs as an underdog. Chiefs is an underdog. I mean, that's enough to, to, to put money and feel okay about it. I don't love the spot, but I don't love the injuries for the Bills. I wish the Bills were at 100% throttle. I'm kind of a Chiefs hater. They've been winning with smoke and mirrors. They could easily be under 500. Let's be honest. They could really, really have a bad record. Their offense is struggling. Mahomes doesn't look great to me. But the coaching advantage, it goes to the Chiefs. Quarterback, you just cross them out. I would actually say it's an advantage to the Bills for this year, not overall, but for, for how they're playing this year. I'll give the advantage to, to Josh Allen. So a little quarterback edge for the Bills, a little bit of coaching edge for the Chiefs. Rivalry, but a game I think the Bills want a little bit more. It's going to be quite the environment, quite the scene. You know, I think Kansas City is almost okay giving a loss away here. They know they're they know they're just going to turn their switch on in the playoffs when it counts, um, but this feels too easy. This feels too easy. Everybody's going to be saying, "Well, the Chiefs are due for a loss. They're due for a loss. You know, they should have lost this. Should have lost that." Like the Bills will get them. The Bills have been playing great. Like this is the one game. This is it. This is the game that the Chiefs are going to lose this year. I can't do it. I can't do it. The only thing that I'll never ever do again is put money against the Chiefs. I just can't do it. Give me the Chiefs. I want that two and a half. And if this gets to a field goal, then I would seriously consider a play. Bengals and the Chargers. You know, I think this is another game where the wrong team's favored. Uh, these are the type of games where I kind of like the Bengals, right? I don't want to lay points with them. I don't, I don't want them against a bad team or maybe they're a little bit flat. Look, you're coming in. The Chargers have been pretty good, but they've been playing, you know, the lesser of the teams. How good are the Chargers? I'm not sure. They're good, but are they great? The Bengals defense, it at least has the capability to play better. I think they need this one, guys. This is this is pretty much the, the deciding game. Last week was almost it, and it was a heartbreaker. This is it. If they lose this, 
It's 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 cooked. And I want to see the Bengals in the playoffs. The receivers, Joe Burrow, it's exciting. I want to be able to watch them in the postseason. I'm going to take the point and a half. I'm not going to be greedy. If you like a dog, always take as many points as you can get. It could easily lose by one. Give me the Bengals. They're going to get this one. I think the Bengals win. Uh, Monday Night Football, Texans and the Cowboys. What an awful game. Lay it. How can you do anything else here? Look, it's a it's a home Monday night game in Dallas. Cooper Rush, I would I would easily, and I don't even know if it's going to be him or Lance, but Cooper Rush, I really think is better than Dak Prescott. I watched a lot of those games, um, not even this season, but prior when Dak was hurt, and uh, he's more than capable. Though the, the problem is just the whole disengagement of this franchise right now. That's not something I can wager on. Seven and a half, it looks very tempting to take the points. You know, you get Dallas at home getting seven and a half over a Texans team that just got their heart broken. But Nico Collins is back. I think the offense will do just fine here. I don't care about Parsons. He's not a huge deal, in my opinion. I'm going to lay the big number with uh, with the Texans. I think they they do similar to what they did with the Lions, but they keep their foot on the gas. They don't give up the comeback. So in this spot, I'm going to lay the big number with uh, with the Texans. Guys, there's another week. That is NFL Week 11. Like I said, we're only a little bit past halfway. There is a lot of meat left on the bone. You see the numbers I'm putting up. Again, I can only say what I have to say, right? I come on here. I show you the numbers. I just pretty much say, I win every week. I don't know what to tell you. Do you want the picks? Do you not? It's cheap. You get the picks sent right to your phone. You go on a text list. Um, there might be some basketball in the mix. I've had very, 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 very minimal action on hoops as it's extremely volatile in the early season. Um, but guys, like I said, man, Tuesdays, Fridays, we're going to start adding in more basketball content and hit the like button on the video. You guys have been, uh, you know, falling off a little bit. Um, the videos were getting hundreds and hundreds of likes. Now they're only getting like a hundred or two The views are down a little bit. Um, at some point I might just wrap up the football content, the, the, the time it takes to record these videos and do them and give you these picks every week. I don't have to do it. I can just take care of my clients and we can, just win behind the scenes. Um, so I might switch over to basketball. So hopefully you guys can bump up the support on these videos a little bit and get it back to where it, it feels worth doing for me. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll have another two and O week on the whiteboard. Hopefully have a good week in premium. I know that's coming up and, uh, yeah, all is good. Good luck to you guys. Bet responsibly. Don't chase your losses. See you in the next video.